Hey guys, welcome to two fat guys talking football. Uh, said fat guys, John Gold with the LA Daily News, Sam Strong, uh, LA Daily News, and Daily Bruin. We are here today at Spalding Field. UCLA coming off a 49-20 loss to Texas. That was almost worse than the score indicated, and that was the third most points that they've let up at the Rose Bowl. So that tells you a lot about how bad that game was. Sam, at the, you know, we talk about how bad the, the locker room was after the game. We weren't even allowed in until 40 nope. minutes after the game. And when we were, the people were, uh, some people didn't want to say anything. So yeah, you know. That says a lot. To me, so. that does say a lot. That says a lot about the mindset of the team right now. Uh, it, it goes beyond disappointment, I think, at this point. And, and I think embarrassing. And, you know, they're, they're starting to question themselves. And they're starting when, to question the message. When you get beat like that, it, it, it really is time to do some soul searching. Yeah. I mean, uh, and you can see it in all their faces. Cash is March. You know, not only does does he get a little, you know, questionable in terms of should I have done this or should I have done that. It's it's uh, maybe we should practice like this differently, yeah. or maybe you know you just get so wishy washy when you get when you get half a hundred hung on you on your home turf. Yeah. Now you look at the defensive rankings after that game. Uh, UCLA falling too. I'm, I'm reading this right off the paper. 34.7 points allowed. Hundredth in total defense. Hundred and third in scoring defense. Hundred and eighth in rush defense. This is a team that that is not just playing poorly defensively, but it's playing as were as bad or even worse than last season. And that's what, why you know we thought that's why Chuck Bull was fired because you know the defense performed so poorly. Sam, going forward, you know what does this defense do? I mean, this is a team that you know that seems to have talent. To Coach Tracy's credit, and and first of all, he was the first one to say, yeah. "I may be the laughing stock of LA," which I was kind of surprised he was so readily admitting that he's a laughing stock. But anyway, I may be the laughing stock of LA, but you know we can do it or whatever. And and his point is that they're in position to make plays, which I think they are. You watch, I watch, I remember three or four times on Saturday, Dayton Jones gets off his block, is around the edge, ready to make a tackle, and Fozzie Whitaker, whoever was running the ball. Just went, right, down or, just went right, or went, right around. Yeah. So I, I think it's more of a tackling issue, which we can talk about. We have at length already. But yeah. uh, I don't think schematically anything's wrong. I think it's that they're not making the first hit and, and bringing the guy down. Then schematically, there is something wrong. Yeah. You know, schematics, uh, schematically, the scheme doesn't just mean the plays that you call on Saturday afternoon. It means how the players know the plays. It means how the players practice the plays. I mean, from a formation standpoint. Okay, that, that's fine, but but I have a, a, a big problem with, with just laying it on the fact that the players aren't tackling and saying, well, I, they're not taught how to tackle. You know, it's not about being taught how to tackle. These guys know fundamentally how to tackle. It's about conditioning your mind. It's about conditioning your body to brace for a hit and to give a hit. And by not doing that, and they don't do it at all. You know, they don't do it at all. That guy, number 11, I can't remember his name now, the fullback who ran for a touchdown, had a gut probably as big as the two fat guys talking <laughs> football. And That's gross. You're not, okay, not that big. But he's. you're not ready to bring that kind of guy down if you're every time you're coming up to make a play, you're just yeah. tapping and, the guy. And, and, and look, Sam and I did not play college football, but barely played high school football. I mean, I'm getting compared to Chaz Bono now that Dancing with the Stars is on, so that should tell you a little bit about my athletic ability. John always gets compared. To, John always gets compared to Jonah Hill, <laughs> which is fine. But I, I told him the other day that uh, his doppelganger's gender is not in question, whereas mine is. Well, so. so. we got Christoph Bono. We used to have Steve Bono. Now we got Chaz. Now Bono, we got Chaz. Bono. Who I heard did pretty well on Dancing with the Stars. So. I didn't watch. Man. I don't know. All right, back to uh, back to football. Even though we didn't play college football, is the bottom. That's right. Yeah, so we didn't play college football. Uh, but you know, I've covered enough, and I've seen enough different teams, and I've seen enough different teams practice to know that the physicality that's displayed here on a daily basis is not quite the physicality that is displayed elsewhere. And Rick sure. Neuheisel likes to say, "Well, other teams across the country don't tackle either. Other teams across the country that aren't successful don't tackle." I think it goes hand in hand, and I'm not talking about going crazy and sending the house and you know letting guys spear each other and cut blocking. I'm not talking about getting nasty. I'm saying you have to prepare these guys, their, their bodies, to be in the right positions, not just their minds. I did a little uh, research over the weekend. Emailed every beat writer that I know of in the Pac-10, covering every Pac-12. Sorry, covering every each of the 12 teams, and while all of them didn't say, you know, in fact. Only Scott Wolf for USC said, you know, they're live tackling every day. People 
said they're taking down scout players. They're, exactly. You know, they may not be wrestling people to the ground, but you know, they're not they're not tapping guys. They're not tapping guys. And you know, yeah, sure. If if you know, X string linebacker or if starting linebacker hits X string running back who's on the scout team, I don't see a problem. With that. And 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 more importantly than that, to me is the fact that this team has more depth, especially at key positions, key position, uh, physical positions, defensive line, linebacker, wide receiver, running back, the positions that would typically get hurt if you were in that kind of situation. Obviously, you're never going to touch the quarterback, but, you know, setting up a Derek Coleman or whatever, you know, those guys. This team is deeper than it has been in years. And so, you know, for me, it's why not get the number ones much more ready and then if you lose a number one, I don't think the drop-off is so stark anymore. And I think Rick Neuheisel is still going about his business as if he has the barren roster that he's had you know, over his four-year tenure. I think it comes down to Neuheisel. I talked with Clark Lee the other day, and he said, we made a decision early in fall camp based on what happened last year that we weren't going to tackle anybody full. And I don't want to say Coach Lee was, was upset about it or anything, but it didn't seem like it was up to him or really up to anyone else. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, you know, this is something that's gone on at UCLA for a long time. And, and you know, I, I like I, we kind of preface this with, who are we to question? Yet, yet Chaz, Jonah. <laughs> Chaz and Jonah. Chaz and Jonah can question whoever they want. <laughs> Let's make that clear. <laughs> John and Sam, we have no idea. Uh, but, but what I'm saying is, Link Kiffin today on the uh, Pac-12 conference call, I asked him point blank, do you tackle? How physical are you? And how bad was it last year when you didn't tackle? And he said, quite frankly, it was, it was really bad last year. It really hurt us, yada, yada, yada. And he ended up with this great quote, all I know is if something's not working, you have to fix it. Or you can't keep doing the same thing. Sure, he... That's my point with this, is that through three games, it ain't working. It ain't working at all. Something needs to change. You know, it's the same every single day. Every day. And he acknowledged that there's a trade-off. There is a trade-off. And I, I agree with that. But I can't remember a time in the first three games where, beside maybe that Damian Holmes tackle against Houston, where the first guy came up, you mean the, wrapped him up. The ref? Well, that was against San Jose State. Okay. First guy came up, wrapped him up, brought him down. Yeah. It's always been, you know, five yards more and another guy gets him. or. But, but it's way worse than that, Sam. Because it's the angle of pursuit. The angle of the pursuit has been atrocious. That you know they're running seven yards deep. You're watching Dalton Hilliard look like he's ready to get the guy, and then he just outruns him by nine yards. You know Alex Mascarene is outrunning the play. Sean Westgate outrunning the play. Tony Dye outrunning the play. You know that's I think what, what, what's one of the things that's most surprising to me is you know you have these veteran guys that you expected to be huge this year. Tony Dye, Dayton Jones, Patrick Laramie, even Sean Westgate. You know these are guys who are all Pac-12 players. You think. Nothing, they're not perfect. Nothing says that better than Cassius March and Dayton Jones having a chance to bring down McCoy yeah. on a third and 18. Yeah. Uh, you know, crucial point in the game. He dances out of three tackles and throws a 25-yard pass for first down, which sets up a touchdown. Yeah, so. and, and one thing that's really interesting to me, and, you know, Rick Neuheisel knows the precarious situation that he finds himself in. He's not He's not an idiot. He's not a dumb guy. He's a, He's actually very, very smart. Man. I think he's... A he's, law degree. He has a law degree. Uh, I think the problem, quite frankly, is he's playing to keep his job, not playing to win the job. And I think that's, you know, you, you look at one position where that's, uh, you know, really read, readily ev evident to me. This is going to be the third straight week that UCLA plays against a first-time starter. Okay? We two against San Jose State, this week, this last week against Case McCoy, and this week coming up against Sean Manuel. So, we're looking at other programs making these drastic, drastic changes. Not at UCLA. Oregon State taking the keys away from Katz, giving it to Manny. Texas taking the keys away from Gilbert, giving it to McCoy and Ash. Why can't Rick Neuheisel do that? And look at the passing game. This is a this is a position that has not had any authority. Neither quarterback has played with authority or command or this is mine. I, I got this. Not, neither of them have. And now you're looking at an offense that you know, threw three interceptions in the first quarter. And you went on Petros and Money today, by the way. Check that out. Um, and, and said as much, you know. Um, yeah. There's a little bit too much conservatism around here. And, yeah. and I would agree with that. And, and all positions, like we talked about last week, where, you know, guys aren't, guys aren't in danger of, of losing jobs. And, and the ones are kind of untouchable and things like and, that. And, you know, I don't, I'm not comparing in any way the UCLA offense to the New England Patriots offense, because that's <laughs> just ludicrous. But if you watch the way that the Patriots call a game with – 
almost entirely looking downfield unless that, it's almost all downfield unless it doesn't need to be. You know, but they're going eight, ten yards. They're creating plays in space. They know that that defense in New England is not their strong suit, so they know they need to score points. Clearly, this defense here has not been the strong suit. You need to score more points. Okay. What I don't understand, and that's not running the ball with you know when you need to throw the ball when you're down 15 you're down in the fourth quarter. Right. Yeah. So uh, our boy back here, Ryan, is telling us we gotta to wrap this up. Um, anything else? Any, any more observations for me? A uh, happy back to school edition of Two Fat Guys. Everyone else is on campus now. For my for my viewers anyway. Uh, yeah. So check mine out, don't care. Though. Check out the Daily Bruin on uh, Thursday, first issue of the year. And uh, this is John Gold. This is. Sam Strong, Jonah and Chaz. Jonah and Chaz. So Cheer for, vote for Chaz on uh, Dancing with the Stars. <laughs> My goal way. is that that one vote that you just got is going to put her over the top. <laughs> uh, guys, thanks so much for watching. You can find me on Twitter at the Cool Sub. Sam. Sam Strong, Tony One. Or DB Sports. And we got Ryan V. Menezes in the back on the uh, on the camera, guys. The thanks so much twos. on the ones and twos. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Uh, this is Two Fat Guys Talking Football at InsideSoCal.com/UCLA.